If you haven't experienced it, walking on a frozen lake is sometimes feels like the moon. And as the ice is being created, it expands and it makes these noises similar to whales. Experience of walking out there, the crunching of the snow under your feet and the vastness. There's all sorts of beauty associated with it and it just gives you some connection with the earth and with nature that you can't get in any other way. As long as I'm fishing, it's one of the few times in my life that I'm totally present in the moment. Other times in your life, you know, you're trying to do multiple things at one time, or you're thinking about this, or I gotta get this done, you know, but when I'm fishing, I am just fishing. As long as you have a line in the water, something really exciting can happen at any moment. I mean, you never know what's gonna come out of the hole, and it could be like a memory you'll have forever. Part of it is the, the weather, and it's almost challenge with Mother Nature, and you're gonna win, and you're gonna overcome, and participate, and enjoy all that, and not be home on the couch watching television because it's cold and snowy. We should put the hub. 14 feet and showing fish, right here. I'm fishing for bluegills, crappies, but if I got a walleye, that would be delicious. <laughs> Earlier when I was here, I couldn't put down and eat my breakfast burrito because I kept catching fish. Oh, there's a fish, see it? I'm gonna catch him. And he's all right, he's not too bad. Nice bluegill. On a duck bill. Duckbill is one of my favorite jigs. The eye is centered in the middle, so it has kind of a goofy little wobble, and I think fish like that. It's irresistible. <laughs> well, right now I can see I've got two down there, whether or not they want to eat it. This half here is the entire water column. So this is 16 feet here on this side. This side I have it set up, this is the bottom six feet. These marks here are fish, they're colored marks. So then you can see as you're watching how far off the water, water column they are. So they might be two feet off the bottom so you know that you shouldn't be fishing the bottom, you should be fishing two feet up or three feet up wherever the fish are. Just kind of entice them. He's following it up a little bit. 12 years ago, when I was ice fishing, I was pretty much the only woman that I would see out there. As that time progressed, women have become very active in it. And when social media started, people were finding each other. Oh, you like to fish? I like to fish. Let's go fishing. In the old days, and it still does have this reputation of ice fishing is something horrible that your grandfather made you do where you sit on a bucket on a lake and you freeze, and it's no fun. All these women now really enjoy the sport. The clothing is better, the augers are lighter, there's little shacks that keep you warm. So a lot of these things that made it so terrible have been fixed. So now you can participate and have it be very enjoyable. As I've seen this progression of women involved in the sport, I notice that companies haven't made that progress. 
So all of their marketing materials and magazines and commercials and articles, everything was related to men, you know? And I kind of got upset about that because I was working as a professional ice angler, working for companies and representing them and getting more women involved in the sport. And I saw how much money women were spending on it. They were spending thousands of dollars on this sport and really good and engaged and participating and carrying the tradition of the sport on with their families, but they weren't being represented in any of the materials and media. So when I thought about the project, it wasn't so much about taking women fishing, which I do and the other things that I'm involved in, but this was about creating media content to give to these people and say, now you don't have any excuse. Here are good images of women ice fishing. Here is video, here is everything that you need to do a better job at what you should be doing to represent this big market share of the industry. There's ice on it. <laughs> It'll melt. It'll melt. It'll melt. You get such ice filled up that we gotta clean the blades off. But I'm gonna go out and drill a hole and put a tip up in. Somewhere away from the noise here. We've got a lot of commotion here right now, a lot of lines in the water. If you want to tip up for a bigger fish, you probably wanna go away from the noise some. up, I can hear it. So what we do is we have a flag on here and if the line gets pulled by the fish with the bait, it trips the flag so you know there's a fish on there. Just like that. Leave it for a while and see what happens. And I got a fish. Yeah. Oh, nice little gill. My life basically revolves around being outside in the cold as much as possible. I do a lot of commercial photography for winter things. That's fun for me to capture these things because they've been in catalogs and magazines and all kinds of big posters, billboards you know, showing women fishing and who are actually doing it technically correctly. And, you know, it's not a bikini shot of women with fish. The big thing is creating opportunities. Within our organization, there's a woman we have, Chantel Whitstruck from South Dakota, who's now started a women's group in South Dakota. Some of our members are members of Wisconsin Women Fish, my group that I started 12 years ago. And then there's the Minnesota Women Anglers. And then there's some Canadian women. Having that ability to communicate and support each other and kind of that solidarity around the sport is very powerful. I used to say it's all about the fishing, but it's way more than that because I've seen these events where women are challenging themselves and succeeding and walking away from that with such a greater self-esteem and a sense of power that carries over to the rest of their lives. It's, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> 